In this video, we're going to show how to find limits of piecewise functions. Let's get started. So let us consider this uh, piecewise function here. Suppose we want to find the limit of uh, f of x as x approaches 1. If we look at this piecewise function, we have two different formulas defined on the left of 1 and on the right of 1. So this tells us that we have to compute one-sided limits first. We cannot compute two-sided limit directly because there is no one formula defined on both sides of 1. So let's compute first the one-sided limits. Let's compute left-hand limit, limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the left. So when we approach 1 from the left, the x values are less than 1. So therefore, we need to use the formula defined for such x values. And that formula is this one, 1 of x plus 3. So we need to use that for f of x. So this is equal to limit as x approaches 1 from the left of 1 half x plus 3. Now, we use same limit theorems as in two-sided limits. So all those limit theorems for two-sided limits can be used for one-sided limits. So this is just a polynomial, and the limit of a polynomial is just the function value at a. So we plug in 1 for x, and we'll get 1 half times 1 plus a 3, so this is equal to 1 half plus a 3, that is 7 halves, or you can write that down as 3.5. Now let's compute for the right-hand limit, limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the right. So when we approach 1 from the right, the values of x are greater than 1, so we have to use this formula for f of x. So this is equal to limit as x approaches 1 from the right of negative x plus 6. This is equal to negative 1 plus 6, which is equal to 5. Now, because the one-sided limits are not equal, then we can conclude that the two-sided limit does not exist. So keep in mind that this two-sided limit exists only when the function values are approaching a single number as x gets closer and closer to 1. So in this case, we conclude that uh, this limit of uh, f of x as x approaches 1 does not exist. We write it as d and e. If you look at the graph of this function, so we have this one here. So we have a hole at uh, x equals 1, okay? Because uh, this one is strictly less than 1, so you have an increasing line here. And then you have a decreasing line for x greater than or equal to 1. And it is clear if we're going to use a wall method to find one-sided limits. So the left-hand limit, so just trace the curve from the left until you hit the wall. And the y-coordinate of this point, that is your limit. And that is equal to 7 over 2. Now, if we compute for the right-hand limit, we trace the curve from the right until we hit the wall, and we're going to hit the wall at this point where y is equal to 5. So that is the right-hand limit. So since these two values are not the same, we conclude that the two-sided limit does not exist. Next problem. So we have here f of x equal to this rational expression when x is not equal to 2 and it's constant. It's equal to 5 when x is equal to 2. Suppose we want to find the limit of uh, f of x as x approaches uh, 2. In this case, there's only one formula defined okay, for x values that are close to 2. So when x is close to 2, x is not equal to 2. And there's only one formula. So we don't need one-sided limits here. We can find uh, two-sided limits directly. So this is just limit as x approaches 2 of uh, x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. And what is the limit of this one? So limit of the numerator is 0. 2 squared minus 4 is 0. Limit of the denominator is 0. So again, if you have this limit form, then the limit may or may not exist. And it tells you that you have to do something, extra effort, okay, in order to determine the limit. So in this case, we just have to do uh, factoring. So we factor out the numerator 
and that is difference of two squares so you have x minus 2 x plus 2 all over x minus 2 and there's a common factor which is x minus 2 x is not equal to 2 so this is just equal to 1 so now we have limit of x plus 2 as x approaches 2 so this is just a polynomial so it's equal to 2 plus 2 which is equal to 4 if you look at the graph of this uh, function then the graph is just a line with a hole at x equals 2 but of course you have this solid dot here because you have a function value at 2 so take note that the limit in this case is this one so again if we're going to use uh, the wall method in finding a limit then uh, this one here as you approach two from both sides as you see the points are getting closer and closer to a single point so therefore the limit exists and the y value at this point is your limit and that is equal to four and take note that the limit in this case it's not equal to the function value your function value is this one which is equal to five so this is f at 2. So keep in mind that finding limits is not always the same thing as finding function values. Next problem. So we have here f of x equal to x squared plus 5 all over 7 if x is less than 3 and it's equal to square root of 5x minus 11 if x is greater than 3. So what if uh, we want to find limit of uh, f of x as x approaches uh, 3? So how do we find this uh, two-sided limit? So we have two formulas defined on the left and on the right of three. So we need to compute first uh, one-sided limits. So here you have limit of f of x as x approaches three from the left. So the formula defined on the left of three is this one. So x squared plus five over seven. So this is limit as x approaches three from the left of x squared plus 5 all over 7 and this is defined at 3 so the limit is just the function value we can just do direct substitution in this case and we'll get here 9 plus 5 so that is 14 divided by 7 so that is equal to 2 now let's compute for the right hand limit so this is as x approaches 3 from the right so we need to use the formula the square root of 5x minus 11 as x approaches a 3 from the right but the limit of the radicand here as x approaches a 3 from the right is 5 times 3 which is 15 minus 11 so that is for its positive so we can use a limit a theorem and the limit of this one is just equal to the square root of the limit which is 5 times 3 minus 11 so this is equal to square root of 15 minus 11 equal to square root of 4 and that is equal to 2. Since the one-sided limits are equal then therefore the two-sided is equal to their limits and that is equal to 2. If we look at this function keep in mind that this function is not defined at a 3 but this one here even if the function is not defined at 3 we still have limit. So when we're looking for limit we don't care about the function value at 3. What we care about are the function values when x is close to 3. So the graph of this one, if we look at this graph here, okay, so as you can see, if we're going to use a wall method here, then we're going to approach a single point as we approach 3 from both sides. And that single point is this one. And the y-coordinate of this is your limit. And that is equal to 2. So this confirms our answer. Last problem. So let's consider this uh, piecewise uh, function here. So suppose we want to find the limit of uh, f of x as x approaches negative 1. Again, we have uh, two formulas, two different formulas defined on the left side of negative 1 and on the right side of negative 1. So we first find one-sided limits. So limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1 from the left. 
So we have to use the formula defined on the left of negative 1. So that is uh, x squared minus 2x minus a 3 all over 8x plus 8 as x approaches negative 1 from the left. When we plug in negative 1, so the limit of this is equal to 0. And the limit of this polynomial is uh, 1 plus 2 minus uh, 3. So that is also equal to 0. So we have a limit of the form 0 over 0. And if you have such a limit of a rational function, it tells you that uh, you have a common factor between the numerator and denominator. And that common factor is x minus a. So in this case, the common factor is x plus 1. So when we do uh, factoring, in this case, we have the denominator is a times uh, x plus 1, the numerator, since we know that x plus 1 is a common factor. Okay, So the other factor here is uh, x minus a 3. And we cancel this uh, common factor. And we'll get here limit of, you have uh, this one here, x minus a 3 all over 8. And we can now uh, do direct substitution here. So this is equal to negative 1 minus a 3 all over 8, which is equal to negative 4 over 8. So that is equal to negative 1 half. Now for the right-hand limit, so as x uh, approaches negative 1 from the right, so we have to use the formula x squared minus a 3 x approaches negative 1 from the right and this is equal to just the function value at negative 1 so that is negative 1 squared minus a 3 which is 1 minus a 3 equal to negative 2 because the one-sided limits are not equal we conclude that the limit does not exist and if you look at the graph of this uh, piecewise function we see this one here so your left hand limit is this one Okay, which is uh, negative one half, and your right hand limit as you approach negative one from the right is this one here, which is equal to negative two. They are not approaching a single point, so therefore we don't have a two sided limit.